Hey guys, we're here for episode four of Playthrough with the Designer. This week, we have got the guy with the longest name in the uh, in the community, Q. How's it going, Q? Oh, it's going all right. Cool. Uh, and we're going to play his most recent course, the course he created for his rookie design contest, which has got an equally long name called Tor. Um, so first thing, how long have you actually been around, Q? Because I think a lot of people think you've been around longer than you have. Uh, so... The reason I was el eligible for the rookie contest is because I actually showed up after the last one. And uh, by rules, if you didn't release the course before the last one, you were able to get in. But yeah, so that would be a year and a couple of months now. So it really hasn't been that long. No, I, I, I just missed the rookie window, actually. Yeah, and so I think for a lot of people, that's a big surprise because there's this real perception that you've been around forever, like you're you're a guy like Andre or Ben or, you know, Rhino or any of those guys, but no, you're actually quite new still, aren't you? Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I got a lot of, uh, I kind of got the plat scheduling job just out of sheer luck and timing, I think. At the time, Petty was the, Brian Petty, yep. Peace Petty, whatever. He yeah. was the uh, plat scheduler at the time, and he uh, had a computer issue. And I was just doing top 10 rankings of courses for every month. Okay. And I just got pulled for that. So nice. it just looks like I've been around forever. Also, yeah. I'm super active in the forums. Mm -hmm. So having a thousand or so posts in the forums does make it look like I've been around. That's true too. And then of course, with the team manipulation trick that you found out, that's probably made people assume some things too, eh? Yeah. I just like tinkering in the designer a lot. So yeah. So I'm just flying around right now and, um, we wouldn't call this your everyday average golf course. This is uh, something that's quite different. So maybe give us just kind of an overall idea of what you were, what you were looking to do here with this. Um, and just kind of what your thought process was and, yeah, just kind of what the goal was here. So it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I design kind of a bit differently than than most people. It was interesting listening to Maddie last time because I think his design style is the opposite of mine. Okay. I don't really pre-plan anything whatsoever. Okay. So like, so, you... sorry, go ahead. Uh, Gio Gatti was the, my last course for Dream Team was really heavily pre-planned and everything. And it kind of boxed me in and mm. kind of made it harder for me to actually work on the course. Okay. So coming into this one, I literally went in without any, like any real rules whatsoever. I just was going to design just purely intuitively, like without thinking. Pretty much just first first thing that comes in my head i would lay that down so did you basically kind of go okay so here's the plot and then oh that's close and then all right well this looks like this hole might fit here and then just kind of make it and kind of like that yeah. or did you so like how did yeah, the plot come much. about uh the plot uh was literally just i raised it up way high if you zoom out at all, you, you'll you see the whole plot is just super raised up on all sides. Okay, so you did the old Arctic Fury trick there. Yeah, I hadn't actually done this for a course yet, so I decided to try it out. Okay. And originally this was in a completely different theme. Everything was completely different. And the kind of way I design, as I said, is backwards. I design the course and then figure out where it would fit. Okay. So... I didn't, this wasn't actually going to be like a Irish Scottish kind of like open Highlands course until near the end of the actual design. I kind of laid down 18 and went, I don't think I can make this fit anywhere else in the world. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. Um, so literally it's just like, so if, if we were to say like, how did you create this? I don't know that you have an easy answer to that. It just sounds kind of like it, it just kind of happened almost. Yeah, at, at this point, um, at least with my last couple of courses, I really tried to do like base stuff off of templates or base stuff off of g golf design architecture. Okay. This was just purely like, 
what would make this hole fun. Mm -hmm. So some holes on this course you'll see don't really have much strategy to them. It's just a really bizarre or interesting shot. Okay. And that's, yeah, so... And then in something we should touch on while I'm thinking about it, um, these fringes are massive. <laughs> For the people who are watching who don't know how to do that or why you would do that, um, if, you could if you could explain that a bit, that would be awesome. So uh, I'll go why you would do that first. So I actually <laughs> want to make a video on this because I noticed there isn't really one yet. Yeah. But uh, – if you're on the green, you'll notice that there's a green speed, right? So mm -hmm. the green speed is a certain, is for this course is 178. But if you switch to the putter on the fringe real quick, yep, uh, you see it's 109 feet. Mm -hmm. So the fringe actually works as a really slow green. And unlike fairway, uh, the firmness of the fringe is dictated by the firmness of the green. Oh, okay. So, and the way the greens work in the game are they're a lot firmer than the fairway for some reason. <laughs> but um, in general, that means that if the ball hits that area, it'll bounce more, it'll roll out more than on fairway. Okay. If you bring out a putter on the fairway too, you'll notice it's 90 feet. Okay. Once I get that up here, I'll do that. How much, yeah, how much more roll you get on a fringe. Okay. As for how to do it, uh, it's actually a lot more simple than it looks. Yeah, if you bring out putter, it's 94. 94. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So then it, the, the, that your fringe is basically 15 feet quicker on a full putt. Yeah. Okay. So then but, how we uh, do it? First, you just, the, the default thing is you can set the fringe width of the normal green. Okay. And that kind of outline you see on the outside left there, that's the actual fringe width. It's like four yards. Okay. And then uh, if you put down really narrow brushes of green, it'll only put down fringe instead of green because oh. you, the brushes are only four yards wide. Okay, so you're kind of tricking it. So I put down multiple like thin lines of green and they just all register as fringe hmm cool oh i'm on the wrong side of the ridge maybe i'm not should actually get a pretty good kick stay up whoa oh don't whoa. you dare don't you dare oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh we were about to have a coming together there if i'd ended up all the way back down again i mean this isn't the first course to do the fringe trick no 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 in this game there's like i think two really good ones um brag highlands by yeah pithy, pithy. Dr. G, yep and then uh jives coos coos golf grounds hannis his world cup from last year also oh okay yeah and this is actually pretty heavily inspired by that course nice so your your goal with this course was fun right i heard you say that it was just yeah, about yeah. In making an enjoyable golf course Mm -hmm. sweet which i mean you can see that um you've got some pretty intense undulations too here which the lighting really shows off nicely um the shadowing of them how did yeah, you was... how did you kind of determine to have it this humpy bumpy well it's actually funny because uh my last course geogadi was also pretty extremely bumpy <laughs> And yeah, because of the lighting, you can actually see the bumps, and it was a playability issue to a point. Oh, without being able to see the bumps, you couldn't really play around the bump, the humps in the fairway at all. Okay, and you'd get kicked off and not know what's going on. Yeah, I remember that happened once or twice. <laughs> and I was just kind of irritated that that you couldn't see them. So I was like, okay, what's I'm just going to go hyper low lighting, right. try to emphasize every piece of ground on this course, make it all visible. And the other side effect of having the large fringes is you can see all those slopes close to the green too and play off them as well. Yeah, and then when we've got these two greens close together, the green and the grid is on both of them, which you don't normally see. So I wanted to have it really <laughs> undulating, but also really visible so if you're playing the course you can see every single hump 
use them to your advantage avoid the ones that kick you in bad places yeah like so, the, like this yeah. like this one yeah it's not so bad and i mean the the only issue with that is that in some places uh the lighting is just too dark mm. and there really isn't a workaround to it yeah and then if depending on what platform you're using too right yeah uh I think PC is the darkest. That's, I, that's what I thought. I've I've had a few um, PS4 courses that when I play on the PC, it's super dark, and the yeah, per, and the person. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's just... always a compromise. Mm -hmm. You you have to lighting in this game is just so finicky. It's yeah. So then for your tease, did you just kind of lay a block down on the fairway? It kind of looks like here. Yeah, I, I did this. Sweet. Uh, an asylum. I re like my second course a long time ago was my other bunkerless course. This isn't actually my first bunkerless course. <laughs> but why uh, am I not surprised by this? But uh, this it just wanted to go full kind of natural. Like I mean, the course is insane, but it's both feels natural at the same time, and that was yeah kind of the idea. It does look like a plot of land was here and you routed a course around what was already here and there wasn't a bulldozer in sight. It's kind of the feel I get from it. Which it's, I mean, that's always my preference, right? Yeah. I, I, enjoy I also kind of design the land first and then lay the courses, the, okay. the like hold down at the very end. So ah. to get that more natural look. I guess, because if you're manually adjusting the ground later on, you can kind of see that. Right. Like you, you're forcing a hole instead of just letting the land do the work for you. Yeah, yeah, you for sure. you already built. <laughs> so, like, geometric isn't natural is what you're telling me. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can do manufactured, but you, you either go, to me, you either go full natural or full manufactured. You don't Makes do sense. like a in-between or else it can look really strange. Yeah. To have like a square green and a really rugged like yeah. environment just can stick out really. But if the ground is really flat and it's really uninteresting, then geometric can really bring out a lot of it can make the land look more interesting than it actually is. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if you were to put a square green right where we're looking at right now, that would look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I hear what you're saying where it there are courses where it does make sense. Um, there's a course in the Rookie Contest, Dirty Ridge Ranch, I want to say, Bundy's course. It's, mm -hmm. it's a bit on the geometric side, and it works. Yeah, uh, he has some extreme clips that look a little strange in some places yeah but otherwise yeah the the course itself looks very good yeah yeah and yeah that was the only thing i really had any concerns with that course was the the cliffs all of a sudden like you were saying so i don't know that i had this much wind when i played this before um but this is a like really here we're looking at the ground a lot aren't we I mean, not so much here because i'm into the wind but it's it. We're really gonna have to figure out how the ball is gonna bounce, and then how where do we play as a result of that? Mm -hmm. Was that? Did you kind of see that that's the route it was going, or? Yeah. You... Uh, so it, it's. I kind of went back to my roots for this one. Uh, I think with a lot of designers, including myself, we're good at very specific things. Okay. And I'm pretty good at ground game style courses in general and uh with the fringe trick you it it only makes sense if you use the ground a lot yeah yeah for sure and after geogadi which is a very aerial course in a lot of ways uh i just felt like i should just go back and design what i'm good at like just focus in on the things i'm already good at i'm good at sculpting and mm -hmm. ground game those are like the two things that i really excel at okay so i was just like for this course i just wanted to emphasize <laughs> the things that i'm best at designing with which isn't always the more forced stuff or anything like that it's yeah. just kind of crazy kind of <laughs> my own thing you're not afraid to make uninteresting courses that's for sure which we like oh um but I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I, I, cause I kind of, I agree with you. I think 
and I think this is true probably in most walks of life, everybody has certain skills that kind of come more naturally to them than others. And if you look at it in golf course design in this, some people are really great at framing a hole. Some people are really great at creating strategy. Some people are really great at sculpting and ground game, like you were mentioning. And then the other parts of those, you kind of need to work on, right? And that to become that well-rounded designer, I don't know that anybody's naturally great at all of it. Because there's so yeah, many skills yeah. that are ne there's so many skills that are necessary to make a great course. That's cool that you mentioned that. Yeah, it it's you kind of have to think about like why am I designing this course? Why am I designing in general? Mm -hmm. And for me, I, it was like there's at first I it was kind of designing to appease people. Like there's there's always that feeling like you're designing to there's a popularity contest to it yeah in a way yeah but i kind of figured out like why i enjoyed designing and stopped trying to design for anyone other than myself i guess you could say so okay so I that sit down yeah no go ahead when i sit down to design now it was like uh, do do i want to design a course to uh, show off or do I want to design a course to uh, learn from it and uh, a lot of, like GeoGotti was really a great learning experience even though it didn't turn out perfect I got a lot better at a lot of things off of that course uh, this was not the play <laughs> <laughs> no thought I'd try it um oh I had a question damn where'd it go it'll come back uh, cause you're saying, you're saying about how, oh, um, I know what it is. So you mentioned designing for yourself and, and, and not get kind of getting away from other people's opinions and whatnot. Um, how do you balance that with being in contests where, I mean, by their inherent nature, you're going to, there's going to be judgment. So at least in past contests, that was a problem. I mean, okay. I think Geogadi was was problematic in that way that's why i was saying i was kind of learning from it because uh that course kind of is in an attempt to appeal at the same time so that was it it's a balance in that i guess for rookie i just decided to ignore that it was a contest course entirely okay and, and okay go ahead. i don't really have expectations i i know people say this course should do well but this isn't really a course that typically does well in contests. Uh, Link style courses and then something this wild really should have detractors. There will be people who absolutely hate this style of course. Okay. And I just kind of went in knowing that I was designing a course like that. I wasn't designing to win. Right. You say. I was just designing a course and it just so happened to be in a contest. Yeah. Is that some, oh, I love that short, awesome. Um, is that, do you think that's something you're gonna kind of carry forward in contests or? Uh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, this might be my last contest for a while. Okay. I, I think of taking a break. I, I didn't sign up for World Cup or anything. Okay. Uh, I, I've done one of every contest, so. Yeah. I'm just kind of want to finish up I have a couple of weird side project things that I'm doing. I don't oh. know if people know I'm doing an RCR. I'm actually making a sheep ranch. Oh, nice. <laughs> so the, RCR, yeah. for those who don't know, real real course recreation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, this hole. <laughs> this is fun. This was the first hole I made on this course. Was it? Yeah, this was the uh, proof of concept hole. Because, yeah. like, yeah. you want to talk about the ground. Because I'm seeing this kicker way out to the right. I'm also looking at a 66-foot downhill, and I'm trying to decide does three would make it down there. I'm also looking at if I don't hit this green, where do I want to be? It doesn't look like there's really a preferred... Like, it doesn't look like there's anywhere that's particularly dead, necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, But it does look like keeping it on the screen with from the T is going to be a hell of a challenge. Oh yeah. But the, there, there's no like obvious bailout, I guess is what I mean. 
I think just fine. Um, this is actually an interesting thing because uh, a lot of designers talk about par, mm -hmm. like the concept of par on a hole. I'm not against having a, a hole that's a birdie hole on the course. Okay. Like this, this hole is probably the easiest hole on the course. It will score, like, as you said, you missed here. It's not like a particularly challenging up and down per se, if you hit it here. There's still a punishment if you try to, if you go long, it's going to be pretty damn hard to get the ball to stop. Yeah, it's, it keeps rolling, doesn't it, down that hill? But I really like uh, having holes that just play easier on a course because I feel like having breather holes can add a lot to how fun a course can be. Okay. Instead of just having every hole protecting par or like being overly punishing. Uh, you were saying about that easy up and down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the greens kind of counteract that a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it was suddenly... When I was saying, you, you're not really dead anywhere, but I don't know that there's an easy shot around the green either. Like, there's... Because of all the undulations you got to deal with. Um, yeah. So it's it's very easy to knock it up and down, which makes it kind of... It makes it a cool short four, right? Where it's it's not necessarily an automatic birdie, but you're not also worrying about going out of bounds or anything. You're always going to take a crack at that green because why not? And that's fun. But you're not always going to end up in a spot where you, you all, you're obviously making birdie. Yeah, it, it's a battle, uh, I think, between making it interesting but also making it fun to play. It goes back to, uh, I, I get like good short drivable par fours can be really high risk reward. But I also just like having holes that are a bit more fun in that regard. So um, trying to do both. I think I'm going to go play the next hole, apparently. <laughs> Good yeah. lord. Jeez. It's, yeah, that's this is the hardest pin on this one. I yeah, think. which, I mean, it's, again, I so I took I took a pitch out there because I wanted to keep it out of the wind. Um, I should have put some spin on it. <laughs> that's what happened there. But we're, yeah, have, it's, yeah. it's still 100. I have a bit of quirks with that still where... There's there's a couple ways that I designed that isn't isn't like I guess agreed upon in the community as much. Like there's I like just really penal holes every once in a while too. So you kind of think. balance out like you had because it looks there like we had a fairly benign hole and then we had kind of more of a penal hole right after it. Yeah. So you kind of like that. So what I'm hearing really is you don't like well I shouldn't say this but you like to have kind of easier and harder holes rather than a bunch of kind of in between yeah i mean i'm i'm kind of in the middle of that there's people who who go out and say par doesn't matter at all and then there's yeah. people who are very into the kind of par dictates how a hole can play like a long par four versus a short par five will play really differently mm -hmm. i kind of try to use both i don't fully agree with either opinion hmm. i haven't really though i don't really have a course design background or anything like that maddie like for instance said that he kind of already knew about course design and such i came into this game i really didn't know anything about course design okay and i never really researched it quite heavily like i know what a template is now you better and than i am then I use template style stuff in 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 like some of my whole design, but only subtly. But ah. I prefer oh. didn't break. I oh. prefer just kind of doing weird whole designs. <laughs> so you mentioned you you didn't really know design, but you knew golf, right? Yeah, uh, I played golf. Yeah, uh, my whole life. I'm a big believer that a lot of that kind of design nerdiness, for lack of a better term, um, can be overrated at times. I think it can be very helpful sometimes. But I think when people are like, okay, well, I'm going to make a core Crenshaw hole or I'm going to make, I don't know, a punch bowl or a Dan or whatever, kind of what you were talking about at the beginning where you, you almost box yourself in, right? 
Mm -hmm. I think I think templates work when they just kind of happen where you look at the land and go, you know what? That green is screaming for Redan. Yeah, I mean, you you can see that in my design still, if you go back to Zodiac, you'll mm -hmm. you probably see um, at pretty much every hole on that course is a template hole. But the way I do that and the way I think templates work better is you create the hole first and then you go, what is this? What template is this hole like? And it can I apply any of the ideas from a template to the hole to make it play better? Instead of going from the start as I'm going to design this template, it's more I, I design the hole. Does this hole look like a template that I can recognize? Mm. And because the template designs are really about making holes interesting, right? So yeah just taking individual ideas from a template and applying it to a golf hole to me at least makes it work better and it doesn't have to be as concrete like it doesn't have to be an exact template okay you can just have one idea from a template so when you were um i guess routing this were you were you kind of cognizant of going up and down the hill and making sure that that was balanced too or uh so the Ben uh, B101 actually gives me a lot of gripes about this because I don't pre plan routing at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I lay down holes and then at around 12 or 13 holes, I then go, okay, what order should I play these holes in? Oh, but so, yeah. <laughs> but you're still, so in that point, you're still kind of going, all right, well, we do need to go down the hill and we do need to come back up it at some point, right? Yeah, and then I have to figure out how to bridge the gaps in between them. And sometimes I get away with it, and sometimes I don't. And I can so, see, I can see where yeah. Ben would give you grief for that because I think he basically, I don't, he usually has pen and paper before he even touches the designer, doesn't he? Uh, he, he can. Uh, he usually has it, most of his holes figured out or his routing figured out ahead of time. I think Maddie does too. A lot of the other oh. designers do so. I usually have 12 or so holes and then I figure out the routing. I mean, on Zodiac, it worked because I was able to make it work. But yeah. then Geogadi or Chusky Tract, all of them have problems stemming from that. But that's kind of your natural personality to do it that way, right? So if you, yeah. were, if you were to try to pre-plan it, you probably wouldn't do as well or you'd frustrate the hell out of yourself. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of learned how I can design well and how I can like design poorly. Perfect. And I guess it, it's something that I could try to work on and like do a course entirely from the start with the routing laid down, but uh, it isn't like a goal of mine at the moment. I know I enjoy designing more when okay. I can just be super intuitive about the whole process instead of forcing anything. Yeah, that makes sense. So this green, that's a significant edge there we're dealing with. Um, now we yeah. talked. You talked about par and and whatnot. This is a short par four, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing that's part of your thought process here. Is it's a short par four, so like you wouldn't do this on a 500 yard par four. No, I wouldn't. And uh, yeah, you you shouldn't really be hitting more than a wedge into this green. Yeah, and it's stuff like that where I walked up where I would picked out the land for this green site. And then I uh, kind of looked back at how it played and went, uh, what what are the common clubs hitting into this? Uh, what angles are, are the golfer gonna, is the, can the golfer take to hit into the green? So I think what, I was over here. Okay. Yeah. And then what sh like shots or what angles I want to punish for different pins to make it play differently. Okay. Like for this front pin, it's really close to that uh, edge. So playing, yeah. So playing way over to the other side of the fairway gives you a tremendously better angle for that pin specifically. It's because you don't have to go over this false edge yeah. here. Okay. But at the same time, that shot's really dangerous on that side because there's it's way uphill, so mm -hmm. it's hard to judge how far the far the driver will go, and there's kind of a pit in front yeah. of it. Yeah, right there. Yeah. See, it's funny because I look at this and I mean, I didn't, I pull, I, I think I read fast in my drive. So that's how I ended up over here. But I don't mind coming straight up 
a ridge like that with especially for the pitch because i can stop it right there's part yeah. of me that coming from here if i pull that a little bit i'm gone yeah so and i i guess part of it would be are you comfortable controlling distance or are you comfortable controlling direction yeah and i also don't like forcing strategy on people either yeah. like saying like there's a definite angle to come into the green from or okay. anything like that so i think on this course at least you can play it the whole way through without even thinking about the strategy of each hole you can kind of ignore mm. the strategy if you so desire to like yeah you can just kind of hit it and, and then yeah i see what you're saying like i think the 10th there's a lot of strategy and kind of figuring out how you're going to roll it on there mm -hmm. um but i see what you mean where you, there's there's millions of options out here that you can how you can choose how you want to hit each tee shot and each and and how you want to approach the green and like you said there's not you're not being forced um i i don't think i'd ever hear you say for this course oh well you played that hole wrong you're supposed to do this mm -hmm. which i think is i mean i prefer that right i prefer to be kind of given this is gonna be long too wow that wind's strong um i kind of prefer no, the the ability to just kind of figure out my own way around the course and, and, you know, make the decision about like that last hole. Do I want to be coming straight over a ridge or do I want to be running alongside it? Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, going back to template things, this hole actually is, I kind of, at least with part threes, cause it's really hard to make part threes interesting cause they're generally just one shot. Yeah. Uh, this one, the land really, because of the way it sloped, this is one of those ones where I looked at it, saw that it kind of lightly resembled an Eden okay. template and added some of the ideas of an Eden to it. Like the fact that it's intensely back to front sloping mm -hmm. and it really punishes hitting it short. Like there's that kind of huge runoff in the front. Yeah. But it's not like an in your face Eden either. No, it's it, it just can kind of it's like light mem like light hints at an Eden, but it's not a true Eden okay. part three. Yeah. So just a little more subtle. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, you're gonna need to read the greens on this course because they're they're not flat. Which, but they shouldn't be. The entire none of the, there's not there's not one part of this land that's flat. So why would the greens be flat? Mm -hmm. All right. So here you kind of, I mean, you kind of probably want to keep it left if you can, because then you get right up the green. Mm -hmm. The wind's not going to help me with that. Fasting is not going to help me with that. Oh, I'm going to get booted to the right anyways. That's fine. So it seems to be a f pretty generous um, course off the tee as far as like hitting fairways. Yeah. Was that was that a conscious decision or is that did that kind of just happen? Um, so I proof a concept till like ten was yeah. the kind of first one. Originally I wasn't gonna have any rough and play on the course at all. Mm. It was gonna be almost all uh fairway. And mm. I think uh, this course, because I was kind of working on Sheep Ranch, the at the real course at the same time I'm still working on it. Uh, this course got influenced quite heavily by the fact that I was kind of looking at that real course constantly. Yeah. And, uh, the fairways are gargantuan yep. at Sheep Ranch. And then the greens are also gargantuan and have really, really extreme slopes. Okay. So there's that thought, like what they talk about, I think, um, uh, you can end up in the fairway, but have no shot in, yeah, <laughs> in certain yeah. areas. Yeah. And I really like that concept of you should look at the, you, you can look at the green and kind of know angles in that you might prefer, like either ones that can use a kicker, as you said, mm -hmm. if you prefer a short shot or a longer shot in, depending on what you're comfortable with. Oh, and, and the thing I like about what you've done and the way the fringe is working here too, is I just had a, I think I was 15 yards from the hole. Um, I mean, I could have hit a little splash up there, hit a little chip, could have done a little partial pitch. It just, it opens up the doors for so many options of how you play that shot rather than if that had been rough, which a lot of courses it would have been, 
mm-hmm. you lose a lot of those options, right? You can't run it, so. Um, oh, I mean, I like difficulty off the T2. I, I think there's a good way to have a balance of difficulty off the T and towards the greens. This course is pretty heavily weighted towards the difficulty around the greens and on mm-hmm. the approach shots. And I kind of generally, that as a, is a weakness as my designer, as a designer is I have a hard time with difficulty off the tee to hmm. some degree, at least comparative to my greens. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah, it's going to make it no problem. And scheduling platinum does kind of affect. Yeah, that makes the sense. Design too. I see crazy greens yeah. literally every day. Yeah. So. That makes sense. Um, any plans for this to end up on tour anywhere? Um, it should be on Elite. It's it's actually funny. I think. Oh, Wes grabbed it, did he? <laughs> every single one of my courses is on a has been on Elite, just about except for like one. Wes likes some some Q courses apparently. Oh, I slowed this. I kind of refuse to schedule my own courses. I think it's a kind of narcissistic to put your own course on a okay. on, on your own schedule. I know Maddie has asked me to do like to actually put my own course on plat because it makes sense like as a plat course too. But it, it's a hesitation of mine to to do that when I feel like it's just like oh here's my own course i feel <laughs> like I, schedule them. Yeah. I feel like all the schedules are kind of like that though because i don't really remember playing a west course on elite but i played it on kinetic um bungalow was on kinetic and then yeah i think you guys are all kind of similar in that, that you, you don't like to schedule your own courses and probably for the same reasons well i actually don't know i think uh well, I mean, every scheduler kind of has their preferences too. Like yeah. uh, Catcherman or Dan Dan likes to schedule Matt F and Andre or Crazy Knuff courses a lot. And uh, I love Jives courses. I will uh, mm. unabashedly say that Jives is like one of my favorite designers. So <laughs> you'll see a lot of Jives influences in my courses. And uh, it, it it's hard for me not to schedule Jives courses on Platinum, and it seems like the Plat guys like Jives courses, so. They, there's a course they like? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I mean, they apparently really enjoy to ran more on nice. uh, Platinum, so. Plat players, I, it's a little shot at you. You guys get a little bit sensitive at times about the courses you play. A little, And it's the vocal minority. You'll be over it. Um, This town's cool. Did this kind of come after everything else and you realize it's kind of that, you know, British, Irish environment, so we're going to put a town over here? or? So I actually have never designed a hole with um, an out-of-bounds road on it. <laughs> this is the first hole I've ever done it on. Oh. Uh, it, it was uh, more of just... I wanted to try doing a, a hole with a road and play. And uh, I think it was in Dream Team uh, and then a couple others when I was watching like Shotstone, I think, design his most recent course, uh-huh. which I really enjoyed, by the way. Wrath at Garden Bag. Highly recommend it. He, his first hole and his 18th hole had these oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely evil placements of road. And then Maddie's most recent course, Hackamore, also had just terrifying road holes. Yeah. Well, oh, we've, we've the wind here. I was I aimed that at the road, thinking if the wind doesn't bring it back, it'll bounce on the road and probably be okay. Um, I have to be honest though. When that ball was coming down, I thought that might kick right, and I'm dead. I actually really heavily play tested to make sure it wouldn't kick into the ob off the fairway yeah i, I it just kind of looks like it will yeah like, exactly it, really kick hard enough. it does now the one thing i will say that's interesting here is about two holes ago i was saying how pretty generous this course is off the fair off the tee yeah <laughs> and then this <laughs> hole showed up the 18th hole is a departure from the rest of the course okay it really is. uh i wanted it to be different enough that it would be super memorable so mission accomplished yeah 
I, I do want to say, and I will say this to anyone in Elite 2 who probably will be forced to play this course soon, hitting a 3-wood off this hole makes it really a lot easier. It's a huge fairway at 3-wood length. You just smack it down there and then get a free par pretty much every round. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, there's the T. So before it kinks in here. Yeah, you just hit a three wood down the middle, and then you have like a four iron in, which isn't easy, but uh, it pretty much guarantees you won't get a high number on this hole. Right, you won't be yeah. pulling another ball out of your pocket. And I just love how this game, almost no one will ever lay up. So mm -hmm. It's true. I, I love leaving those options in because I feel like if people really want to just hit a three wood down there, it's probably the optimal play on this hole. And you mentioned it's most a, of the time. And you yeah. mentioned it's pretty much a free par. And I just think a lot of people went par. What? No, I'm trying to make birdie. What do you mean par? Yeah, exactly. So that that that'll be interesting. The other thing is if if you come to the last hole and you know you're like let's say you're sweating the cut. Mm hmm. Maybe you try and take driver to try to, you know, make birdie. Maybe you do something silly and try to bounce it down the road to get yourself a little bit closer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's cool that there is the option to, if you know you're, you know, you're, you've got a couple shots in the cut, well, let's just get par and get out of here. Yeah. Hmm. Plus, I kind of realized that this is the only, I mean, ro like having roads in play in a golf course doesn't really make sense like in real life at all in most no. cases it's either because the course is really old or mm -hmm. yeah it's a links course in the first place so i felt like this is the only course where i could really get away with that and it's still like be like oh this makes sense it's a super old looking golf course it's funny how that you that can always be an excuse for any design you try it's well it's a links yeah right it's, it's a exactly. links exactly there you go um, it, it makes sense. The road's in play. I mean, a car might be hit, but mm -hmm. yeah, there's, before they care. There, there's a house like 10 feet away from the playing surface. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's um, why I usually shy away from roads being in play because I'm like, it doesn't, to me, it's so hard to justify it, like making any sense. Yeah, I hear you. I, I mean, it makes sense in real life at times with like the old course or mm -hmm. if if it was just... A town got built around a course that was already there or whatever yeah, um exactly but we don't have those constraints in this game so i see what you're saying um i it's i mean it's an interesting course i i really enjoy it uh it's the second time i've played it now that was i don't think i had much win the first time so this time it was a it was a much more difficult test um because it was harder to stop the ball on the greens because you had to figure out what the wind was going to do right and i i felt like a lot of the downwind holes were, were difficult because you couldn't stop the ball um yeah uh that was another key is is making it so downwind isn't always easier mm -hmm. uh, downwind can actually make a lot of the holes on this course harder so. yeah yeah particularly the par threes because you really can't stop it then um yeah. i had a lot it felt like i had a lot of the uphill holes were in, were with the wind which can make that more difficult too because the ball's coming in so much shallower it isn't going to stop yeah. Um, but no, I, 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 I mean, I, there's a playthrough on, of, that I did of this on the channel from not that long ago where I just raved about this course. My opinion hasn't changed. Uh, I just think it's such a cool, different, um, just, yeah, it's just, it's just so cool, unique, different. It's not your typical North American style course. Um, and that's one of the things I really enjoy about the, about you guys being able to design courses as you can make stuff that you don't ever get to play in real life. Yeah, and I, as I said, I'm not particularly good at designing a normal golf course, I guess you would call it. This is kind of my wheelhouse, is this kind of more wild. Yeah. If I were like to, I mean, I, I do need to make a Parkland just because it'll kind of help me with design, constraining myself a bit more. Don't but do it. Don't do it. Said, don't do it. <laughs> make a Parkland? Don't, no. don't do it. <laughs> I, hate, I hate Parkland courses. No. Do it, right, no, right. do it. Do it works for you, obviously. Um, so you mentioned you have a hard time creating normal golf courses, but this looks about as natural as you could ever want a course to look. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Um, as I said, I really 
It, it's a tidbit about me. I came from uh, City Skylines, which is a Sim City style game where you build cities. Okay. It's in the same engine as this game. It's in Unity, uh -huh. and it also has a has a map creator. So my focus is my focus in that game because I also made maps in that is I've always been focused on environments and uh, sculpting the land and making kind of realistic geographical things. So okay. at least in terms of that, that's that's kind of why in this game it's kind of a strength of mine too. Okay. I just carried it over. Okay, that makes but, sense. Yeah, so I'm good at making really crazy or more interesting environments in that regard uh, if it was a parkland you and you generally the land is kind of flat or yep. less interesting and then i that would like be a part of the course that i wouldn't be able to like show off my skills on right? mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. not be able to show my ability to sculpt things as much yeah I hear what you're That's saying. what I mean by excel at this is because it shows off what I'm good at in some way. Going back to kind of showing off things, but yeah, Sweet. it shows off that I'm good at uh, sculpting per se. Yeah, for sure. Um, every episode I end the same way with a couple, the same couple questions. First one: What is your favorite thing about this course? Uh, the it would probably be the uh, 18th hole, actually. Okay. The AT tool in general, I've never tried anything like that before. It kind of came out of nowhere. I kind of worked on it. And to me, it's, it doesn't, per, it fits kind of as a finishing hole, but it's kind of a different style than the rest of the course. I liked it so much. I kind of want to make another course around that style, a more of in town kind of linksy course in the future, maybe. Cool. But otherwise, everything else is kind of a grind. I, I generally end up hating my own courses after I'm done with them. So it's hard for me to say I like anything else in particular. Yeah, the I've... lighting wasn't perfect. It was just annoying in a lot of places. The planting was annoying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if if there's least, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm I'm of the class that's similar to like Dylan Bronson, where we just kind of really hate on our own courses and then people have to tell us it's good because i just can't objectively look at my own courses yeah and I, cool. I think a lot of designers are that way too mm -hmm. like they basically say well, you should publish a course when you can't stand the side of it anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> if there's something you could change about this course what would it be uh i still feel like and and this is just me i never feel like i'm done okay with the course, uh, the most that I would change are probably pin positions could be changed a bit in some places. I feel like there's some really, really penal pins on this course. Mm -hmm. uh, there's maybe one or two on this pin set. Uh, on some other pin sets, there's some other orange slope ones that make this extra challenging from short distances, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is just minor sculpting things. Whenever I play it, I see tiny details, sculpting details, where fairways end or where precise lumps on greens that I just would change. So Okay. Cool. Well, uh, Q, I've had a riot playing this. Um, it's been awesome talking to you and hearing your insight, and, and, and particularly for me, how you how you design um, in the first place. is I, It's probably unique, um, and I think it's cool just to kind of to kind of get inside your head of, of how you create courses like this. Yeah, I, I kind of realized there's a lot of downfalls to it. There's a lot of pros and cons to the way I design, but it works for me and it's kind of fun to, to design that way because you get some, if you focus on like just making some really cool holes first before mm -hmm. routing, because I feel like routing can really constrain your creativity and what you can do because it kind of forces certain holes. Hmm. So but would it, I, yeah. Well, I was just say, would it be fair to say that advice you might give a designer is to kind of focus on what works best for you and not necessarily what other people think you should do? Yeah. Uh, I think too many people look at, uh, what, like for instance, B101 or crazy Canuck, like both of them have a very distinct way that they design golf courses. Okay. Andre like designs in order to some degree and then mm -hmm. Ben 
lays everything out beforehand and really tediously goes. And it works for them really well. And I've tried both their styles and it, it just doesn't work for me. Okay. So yeah, just do what to you works. Uh, trying to force things can just sometimes not make you just not make a good golf course. Right. And then the best way to find that out would be just to get into the designer, I guess, right? Yeah, just uh, even with Design League, like uh, a lot of my style was because I did a lot of Design League stuff in the past. And I've designed six holes and then without any routing in mind. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that just, comes back soon. Yeah. I hope that comes back soon. So it's a great place for people to be able to try stuff out. Anyways, I could go all day. I don't think people <laughs> want to listen to us yap for the entire afternoon. Um, yeah, but uh, thank you so much for being on, Q. It's been, it's been a pleasure having you. Mm -hmm. and thanks for having me on as well. Thank you. Um, guys on, on YouTube, if you've enjoyed this, please consider hitting, hitting, bleh, hitting like and subscribe. Um, let me know that you're enjoying this. I'll have another uh, episode of this uh, playthrough of Designer next week with a to-be-determined guest. But for now, I'm going to say cheers. Thanks, guys.